Welcome back to the LJL unofficially official, official, unofficial broadcast. <laughs> we were here with Nymera, and um, I wanted to ask you specifically uh, about the history between axes and about hawks because I think it's interesting. Maybe we're not seeing a rivalry like we did with uh, the previous match with uh, with Jester and Sengoku, but I'm still interested to hear about you know who they are, what they well, bring to the table, and all that good stuff. Yeah, I, I, think, I think, think the, the real, real rivalry, rivalry here is is, is the rivalry, rivalry of the yellow, yellow logos, logos in the LGL. LGL. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think <laughs> that you know the battle for <laughs> dominance in that <laughs> color. It really has been second. To, okay, right. Yeah. So obviously, like it's not like our top marquee matchup. But between these teams, we have some interesting dynamics because I feel like the time when this matchup really came to a head was a little bit in 2020 when Axes were pushing towards playoffs for the first time back with the Corporal roster. The Hawks had just come into the league. They've replaced USG, who were a top three team within that league. And then actually Axes ended up kind of beating Hawks in that first split. Hawks ended up becoming last place with Burning Core as well. And Axes just snuck into those playoffs. And... Ever since then, we have had a couple of close games between them, but their trajectories have now become very, very different. Hawks just about slipped into playoffs, then disappointed. They slipped in again, they disappointed again. And Axes were disappointment, disappointment, absolute starfire in summer 2021. And now they've kind of hit the bottom of the barrel again. So I think that when we look at both these teams, they are the team, that, if I were to put it down to kind of like a bit of a weird tagline, it is a battle of the teams which don't always know what they're doing with expectations. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Oh. Anything to add in? Feel free. Yeah, oh, I mean, that, that's so that's so painfully true. Um, I, I think it's it's really pr probably the best way to uh, describe this matchup. There's a lot of... Um, I, I think uh, unproven potential, I, I, I think, on both these rosters to sort of carry on from that point in general. I think looking at the Hawks, you have to talk about players like Kinatsu and, and Dasha and Blank, who have been incredible players at, at various points. I mean, Blank's a goddamn world champion, for goodness sake. But it's never quite worked together on this roster. We're starting to see a little bit more of that cohesion come through uh, over the past few games. And then for Axis, it's kind of just whatever is going to win us games. And at the moment, that pretty much just looks like Sanchu. I think we're talking about Swamp potentially coming through and being a carry, but really that's because we're not really seeing much of that carry threat come from other parts of the map. Right, and talking about not seeing so much of a carry potential, uh, Axis uh, looked a little bit shaky on day seven, and uh, I think they took a pretty compelling loss. Um, what, do you, what do you think that the team has been lacking so far? What have been their struggles this split mostly? So I, I think that uh, when I've been watching the games, obviously I, I sadly haven't managed to get my hands on too many Axis games this split, uh, but it feels like Axis are... They are struggling to find their own identity, and I think that is a lot, that has meant that they've dipped into desperation at times, and that's come across in overaggression. It's come across in very imprecise engages. Whereas in spring, they knew what they were playing, even if it wasn't like the best way to play League yeah. of Legends. They were playing around Toltu in the top side, a very different top laner. Who, um, of course, Yelioshi was there as well when they played like Smite top lane. They were like the LGL Smite top lane team in very early spring. Then they switched over to Toltu, and it's like. Look, we're going to go play around carry tops and we're going to skirmish across side lanes and that's how we're going to play this game. I don't think they found that same identity. I think because they're struggling to figure out to be how they want to be on the same page, that's meant they've become quite desperate across the map. Yeah, I, I think in many ways, do you ever see those programs where like celebrities will like look back at through their, their family history and see their roots? I think for Axis, they've kind of just got nothing there. It, it feels like they've got nothing that they could really fall back on as a team. No sort of history that they can rely on to propel themselves to future greatness. Are you saying they're like homunculi? Like they're created beings. They actually have no family history. They are progenitors of a new well, magical race. That's, that's, that's a little bit, player. <laughs> bit mean. A little bit mean. To call them that's the one thing. Because yeah, yeah. like, if they have one recent family history, it's Megamin. And Megamin yeah, was the last way. remaining player of the, the again, that, that huge roster which ended up somehow for a team which was destined for last place in the entire orcs history gets third with honey with hogler in the jungle megamin was the last remaining member now he wasn't the star carry of that but that's the only real claim to greatness they've got yeah. in terms of their history 
do we think that maybe Mega Man is enough to ignite the fire and bring well, these guys back up in the standings or just uh, give them a little boost, maybe? Honestly, it, it depends on, on how they feel uh, when they woke up this morning because we have seen <laughs> a couple of carry performances from Mega Man, but mostly he has um, been much more of an enabling, facilitating role uh, as a mid laner playing towards a bot lane carry. That actually worked really well for them uh, last summer. And then bringing in Sanctu for this year, who's shown glimpses of of, of g genuine like high level ad carry play but it's not quite been the same dynamic and i'm not sure if i trust megamin to be the big carry that his team definitely needs right now yeah because you know this player came in as a rookie uh last year so this is their second year of play similar to i know who of course we just saw in uh, rascal yeah. jester they were actually of course both on that uh that you know that star started roster and then um he really succeeded in summer when they went towards Iron Spike Whip champions in mid lane, like Renekton, Lee Sin, Set. He didn't need to worry about the basic fundamentals of wave clear, wave management, understanding what to do uh, in laning phase as a mid laner. And that's how he kind of put on his training wheels. He started to come off of them, but we haven't really seen that development into being a real carry player from Mega Man just yet. Sounds good, guys. And now switching things a little bit, but still talking about uh, Axis in, in a way. Uh, they they picked Belveth in their previous match, and I know that there's a lot to be said about this champion, and sure, they didn't really have a very convincing showing of the champion itself, but to anyone that wants to answer, I'd love to hear what you guys think right now are the advantages and the disadvantages of the Queen of the Void. It is a win more champion. If you have strong lanes and they can support your jungler early, you have the wrecking ball coming out of the jungle and that ends up being a very big win harder kind of composition. But if you're already losing lanes, you're already losing a jungle matchup, it just falls apart. So that's my worry with a lower pl lower, play uh, lower place team picking this champion. Anything to add? Yeah, all right, perfect guys. Well. Talking aside, it is time for draft between Axes and the Hawks. So let's go. Look at this guy. <laughs> Look at this guy just slotting right in here. How are you doing, Sam? <laughs> I'm doing very well. I've been enjoying the desk there as we're waiting to get in. As uh, decided to have a little fun on my, my entry. entry in that time. Um, keeping an eye on these picks and bands. We've already got some pretty distinct ones out from both sides. Senna, Gwen, Silas out by Axis. On the other side is the Wukong, the Zeri, the Lucian. Allowing free first pick Seraphine, though, who I know a lot of commentators and analysts have said is, is incredibly strong okay, in this pack. So that's one thing, but then remember back to spring 2021. I did debut split for Mega Man. We're just ah, chatting yes. about how this player was the uh, you know the, the the last kind of bloodline of the, the great Axes lineup from, from summer 21 of, uh, of last year. He was a big Seraphine player. Now, mm. did it work? No. But he played it a lot in spring of Indeed. that year. That was when Seraphine, of course, was very, very strong. It's something which Mega Man has played a lot. We expect this to be going towards bot side, but there is a history with Axes and Seraphine to just tap into very briefly. Now, of course, we've seen the lock-in of a rapid Tristana there as something of maybe an answer into the Seraphine or just something they're feeling comfortable. I know Marvel mm. plays it a bit. I know Dasher in general is <coughs> flexible, so maybe that's the option. The lock-in, the poppy source, that's two big disengage ultimates, but not necessarily the duo I was expecting as a, as a red one too. Uh, you all come for anyone? I mean, it's I... A, it, they're playing TFT. Um, I, you know, the thing is, I actually haven't played TFT for a long enough time. Same. I don't know whether Yordles are actually still Neither in the Neither do I. Match. Or at least there will be Yordles, but I don't know whether Yordles is like a, a like thing. A thing. Yeah. yeah. Is, like, uh, is, is it like a, like a theme? I forgot what it's called. Uh, 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 yeah. Think, My lack of again, knowledge of TFT hurts really shouldn't have jumped into this topic if we didn't know as much about it. <laughs> Thing is, we I was wondering, oh, you see that Seraphine? Sure, you can lock in that Tristana, have a kill combo, put it towards bot side. But ah. again, you know we mentioned the Megaman Seraphine. So you've locked in a Tristana and you think, yeah, that's a kill lane. Maybe it's not if the Seraphine is back into mid and the Callista Mumu response, that is probably the strongest level one lane in the in the game right now. Maybe outside of Callista Renata. It's definitely Callista lanes which are really starting to uh, control the bot lane when it comes to that. Reiner, if we're talking about Mega Man Seraphine, this is probably, outside of Ebi's Nar, the second most nameplated champion. Massive. When Reiner picks up this champion, it is not just any regular route. This is a special champion for this support player who did win in 2020 Summer on V3. Struggled to find form, again, outside of this champion for him. So already, Hawks and Axe is going back towards comfort, going back towards those 
Those um, old reliables that Absolutely. break in case of emergency champions. It was, it was that in the set, right, that Reiner made his name on, really, in, in the LJL, where before we kind of not had a lot to say about the guy. And he comes out and pops off for that split and that season in particular, but has struggled alongside the Hawks earlier on in the season to really find the cohesion required. That Rel is right back to that comfort as you side. As you said, maybe you can play into some of the really heavy engage you said from the Amumu. I mean, between a Fate's Call and a Bandage Toss times two <laughs> and a Curse of the Sabbath. I mean, that's a lot of CC. And of so, course, uh, they could have had a Poppy on top of that. True. Axis, because remember, they have Yellow Yoshi in the top lane. Oh, yeah. So as much as I think of the Dristada and the Poppy, a bit of an odd combo. The more mm. I think about it, I think, actually, hang on. This is a takeaway from Yellow Yoshi, who, for those of you that don't know, Yellow Yoshi was a streamer for a very long time and has self- uh, dubbed himself the best poppy in Japan. And taking that away from that guy is obviously very, very important. In fact, uh, we were talking about this again when we were kind of chatting about these matchups and, and the day of games. It feels like Yelioshi is an, a superb poppy and then kind of middling on a lot of other things. Already, that's a big takeaway, specifically in this matchup. Yeah, hugely so. And I apologize for my earlier statement because I've actually even got it in my notes. Yellow Yoshi plays Poppy. Like, yeah. <laughs> underlined a few times. Like, huh, Poppy red one too? Well, why is that? Oh, yeah, this guy on the other side would take that every time otherwise. Um, was, of course, not first pick. Had to be taken away. And now, what do the side of Axis want to lock in? Swamp might be looking towards a Volley Bear, which is still pretty high priority around the world and is another one of those engage options. And if you time it right, you can't knock him away. No, you can't just trade alt for alt and then Volibear's already in your backline. And the, there is a slight worry for me now. Now, Axes are currently 2 and 5, struggling mm. out of that playoffs bracket right now. They are not a mid table team. They're definitely below that at this point. But still, Hawks haven't looked great when they haven't had a high agency engaging duo from mid jungle. Now, I like Dasher on stuff like Victor. I think actually he has strong, shown strong individual performances on that. I'm just wondering if it's what his team Yeah, the, the play style yeah, problem. Blank yeah. has played two games of Poppy the Split. He's played it across history, of course. But I think as a mid-jungle 2v2, I consider the Volley Bear just kind of wins it on his own and then Seraphine is just there to kind of cheerlead at that point. And already that makes me question whether this is comfort for Hawks. It is in part, but I do think that there is... That's one thing for me to track. Have Hawks now kind of... Can they show us some skill sets beyond just we play through mid jungle? Because that's what we've seen being very strong for them before. And can Axis actually abuse that and say, you're away from your comfort and we have a Volley Bear who is very good at this. Maybe that's our angle for victory. Of course, a lot of mid game spiking, as you're saying. But effective, you kind of make that Callista not a factor. Suddenly damage gets a bit scary. And on the other side, you've got Tristana, Gangplank, Victor. Like, that is a lot of two, three item damage coming out of that triple carry threat from the other side of the rift so if hawks can get to that point and if blank and reiner on two of those picks particularly reiner as you're saying on a more engaged champion that he's more comfortable on you hit those mid-game fights you hit those two three items and you can see exactly how they're going to win the game or want to win the game rather not to spoil the script or anything. <laughs> so um the way i look at these tt these two teams interacting does feel like there are ways that of course once again much like this bot lane the bot lane in the last game mm. bot lane can be where things explode very early on into the game top lane kanatsu and yeliyoshi probably gonna be left to their own devices and uh sometimes uh well as we said not really as a um like it's not really a towards their identity sure but the hawks aren't probably going to play towards their mid jungle in, in regards to the champions they've locked in this time no not necessarily um of course Realistically, you're looking at your skin. Okay, well, Nar Gangplank will be kind of sitting on the side lane doing their thing, and it's basically like probably bot lane, isn't it? That's where you got the action, it's where you've yes. got the aggression, it's where you got the tools to go in. So I'm expecting, as I'm sure you are as well, like Swamp and Blank will be looking. How many times can we affect bot lane within the first ten minutes of the game? <laughs> yes, that's probably what I'm looking for. Of course, um, that's early game. LGL, sure. LGL as a whole, we don't really like a lot of early game aggression unless your name is Detonation Focus mm. Me. They are the, the early game team. And even now in this split, they have found less inroads in that area of the game as they did in spring. Mm. It feels like they're more of a mid game focused team at this point. And speaking of that mid game, um, this mid game is going to be very, very messy. Mm. I'm thinking about suddenly a fight erupts and you have a cannon barrage coming down you have a fate call throwing someone into it when a fight starts for either of these teams it is likely to escalate and snowball very very quickly that's what i'm looking towards in mid game and seeing who can pile on quickest and most effectively there are a lot of circles being put down at yes. the same time from both teams or at least like large geometric shapes I just realized there's a lot of things <laughs> that aren't circles but wait, are wait, still... wait, 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 what, what isn't a circle in this game you have uh, seraphine ultimate it's not a circle 
Uh, anything's a circle if you try hard enough. I, I, um, oh, no. So that's I, uh, that's actually no. Nar alternate is actually just a circle. Thank you. Nar alternate is the actually a circle. yes. Um, Chris, it I draws a giant that. circle on the ground. Um, Rel ultimate circle. 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 ultimate circle. circle. Fate call. Uh, it's got a circle indicator. It's a circle. Okay, um, uh, Chaos storm is a circle. Chaos storm Poppy is a circle. That is. Okay, that one's a little bit different. That's a line. That, that, that's a hammer. <laughs> yeah. Um, Victor E is a circle. If then you take the circle and you drag it. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of this, 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 you could tell if, if you hadn't worked this out already that Nymera was in fact a physicist before so, he so, became a so caster the and the point is with, 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 within certain realms of like perspective anything could be anything well yeah, I mean, for a certain point I like to learn from Obi-Wan Kenobi I don't yes. know if anyone watched that series recently but uh, from a certain point of view anything anything can be uh, from yeah okay see so the funny thing is actually the more correct thing is anything is a line if you try hard enough it doesn't okay. matter if it's a curve or anything it's still a line um, that's why I think it's just it's like, a line with corners in it. It's a line. Well, I mean, technically it can be if you have like the equations which make it like go positive when it hits the y-axis. You can do oh that. boy! Yeah. Thank you for that you reminder. Have, like, it's the way you can get sharp edges and lines where you have like it goes positive when it hits the axis. Yeah. Um, it's just net. It's net graphs. Yeah. Thank you for that yeah. in-depth knowledge that I still don't know if I comprehend, but now I, I understand that I don't now, comprehend. Now, if I it. if I had all of the fancy tools and I could draw on the screen, I'd, I'd show you what it means and like do a little like. W what do the lines mean, Mason? To yeah, so it looks like as you, as you might have been Hi, able to tell, back. um, we are not into game yet, yeah. and we're talking about, about things which are not about League of Legends because it seems to be a bit of a delay right well, what, now. What so we, we have some time out. to go on then. What we figured out, I was gonna go put it back on track, mm, but Sam well, has okay. an angle. I, I, I was gonna say, actually, Where we, what's, what's our what, next what, pod of call? I would say, like, actually, we've got 360 degrees because everything's a circle, as we've just found out, um, but. Instead, why, Chris? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, take it away, Professor Nymera. Explain. Um, well, as you can see, these are yes. many many circles which I, yes. I, I like. And um, now the thing is, they're not integrals, so they don't scare me just yet. What you will end up realizing is that when you end up getting towards higher and higher degrees of, uh, of maths degrees. And, and, of, of, and of degrees, mm. yes, um, everything becomes an integral. Uh, whenever you thought you didn't need to le learn algebra, do for that. You see, this is how you tie it into League of Legends. You talk about skill shots from river to high ground. And the True. the I weird like the geography and think. lines on that one. I think we all remember. Geography, the, geometry, and League of Legends. I think the one that really comes back to haunt me is that one where you saw the Jin W onto Kana's Jakes from Dan Wong Kier on Ghost, yes. where that's where the, uh, the Deadly was last year. Indeed, right? the Deadly Flourish catches Kana and at least on. Uh, on screen, it seemed like it would miss, but obviously with the way league geometry works yep. and lines are drawn from river to high ground, got caught out, and that was a game-winning play. Yeah. In a lot of ways, we are finally onto the rift. Yeah, we are onto the rift, and um, you know, as much as we've been talking about geometry and circles, you know, I also have myself a bit of a rock and metal music background. Uh, oh, of course, and we love geometry there too, Indeed. which is of course about very much circle pits, pits mosh yes. pits. Circle pits are a subset of mosh. Pits. I see, yeah, and we don't really get them in you know esports. It'd be quite strange if people decided mm -hmm. like being quite violent in the crowd, but the closest thing we do have to it is Twitch chat yes. and social media. So if you are enjoying the show and uh, coming to learn about LJL, or of course, continuing your journey with us, of course, we've got a lot yep. of our own all, all faithfuls in, uh, in, in the chat as well. Let us know how you're feeling about the show and what your favorite memories are of these teams too, because just actually these teams, while they aren't the premier matchup in the LGL, I can think back to spring 2020 mm -hmm. practice when they made playoffs the first time, they made that miracle run starting at 06, made it into playoffs. Hawks not really had the same level of miracle runs, but they actually are looking to, for the first time ever, live up to expectations going four and three in the first round robin, far outstripping their uh, spring performance in the first round robin and looking to make themselves uh, something to be recognized on the map of the LGL. Absolutely. And for the Hawks, you said, we in, sp in particular, between myself, Namera, Lexi, all kind of said, look, actually with the way things are shaping up and the trajectory we saw from the Hawks, we're expecting this team to do a lot better in summer and be something of a dark horse for a decent playoffs mm. run. And we've kind of seen that in summer. Like the four and three, we've seen some good games, we've seen some weak games, but blank right now is going to flash over. He's flashing over. He was spotted on a ward. Axis should know this Volibear's is coming. Here. Volibear is level three. The Exodia of level three ganking. Hawks... Have himself spotted. the angle still. Swamp should be oh, seen. They blank. see him in the prime. He's going to come around the other way, trying to play this one out. It's all about the angles and the lines you're taking this one around. See, geometry's everywhere, guys. 
and he will heroic charge away to a minion. <laughs> but thing is, this is very intelligent from Axis. They put down that early ward, know that potentially Blank had been looking to do something towards bot lane earlier. Now Swamp has the flash advantage. Of course, flash with Poppy so important. Now, the last time I saw a Hex Flash on Jungle was actually self-made for Vitality in Spring. Because uh, that was the last time which I ended up seeing that. Uh, it allows you some creative early pathing, so that means that you you haven't wasted your flash for no, for nothing. You now actually can get some more ingenious jumps over walls with that. But Blank already been uh, thwarted at the first attempt. Uh, you also realize that Hex Flash's indicator when you're charging up is it's a, a circle. It's a circle. <laughs> See, they're everywhere. The symbol Ooh. of the League of Legends Illuminati is in fact a circle. It's not a triangle. Um, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait until wait until uh, we see this happen for the second time again, and it's the cy the cycle repeated once again. Yeah. It's the circle, circle of life. life. <laughs> I, uh, I just knew it. All right, um, and the gangs is all. Um, well, Marble I'm not hearing. Marvel and Robert. Get oh, Oscar does the minion, but turn around and Oscar now in danger. Remember, there is no fate call right now. He has an explosive charge on his head. It gets chugged out before it does have a health pot to chug Tuck. through. But that was well played by Reiner to get behind the minion, and Oscar feeling a little bit frustrated by that one. I am sure. So. Um, interesting stuff to talk about the explosive charge. Of course, they're level three now. At level one to make that gank work. I know it's a little bit going back to what's already happened in the game, but Marble didn't actually level up the explosive charge. Mm. So he didn't end up pushing the wave inadvertently. Just last hit. Of course, Tristana mm. can't hold waves very easily once you have that skill leveled up. Of course, Hawks invested a lot. It seemed like this was a very uh, a set play on that they'd uh, planned on the training field on, mm. on their scrims and wanted to pull out on purpose. Didn't end up working this way. And now, not to bang on about this too early, but the Hawks, as we said, when they've typically been a, a successful on the aggressive, it has been through mid-jungle, playing through bot this time, not working out quite so easily, although, of course, Blank's still involved in that towards the bot side of the map. And uh, Axis, uh, weathering the storm so far, mm. even though they haven't found their own advantages through their power point of their bot lane in the early levels. Absolutely, mm. and the, the key point, I suspect, will be when we start seeing some of those level sixes come through and those really big engage tools are online for Axis, and I think that will be when we'll be keeping our eyes out for the really explosive moments. As it stands, it's been a relatively quiet early game outside of that attempt at Hex Flash play, as we stated. Nothing else too much to write no. home about, but I guess for me, it's like, where would you want to be looking in so terms of So this is what I just want to talk about right now, right? Because you can see what happened on screen. Sentry not hitting the minions, stacking it up. What that means is that the next wave is going to come in. There are going to be extra minions to the side of Axes, and Volley Bear has come down for this as well, but it's Again. too late. Is They're it too be, late. There's just nowhere to go. Flash away, but the explosive charge claims that means it's another rocket jump forward, and Ozuka has got no minions, no way, but he will waddle away to safety. The sad mummy has no friend, no longer. This is so sad to watch, actually. The last game which Axes played, well, this is one of the games which V3 played, actually, just the other day. One thing which I said was, um, you know, I, I look at them versus the teams that they're playing, and like you can see their ideas, but they're just not clinical enough. This is the difference between a bottom tier team and one of our contenders towards those playoffs. And you can see they've stacked the wave, they've called Volley Bear down, they want to play around bot, but the timing's not there. Hawks find an opening and they punish exceedingly aggressively. That lethal mindedness finally works out, and the Hawks playing around bot side again, not something that we've seen as much from them this split, works out for them so far. If Axis win this, they could start tying up with some of the rest of the league. But as it stands, they went two wins at the beginning of the split and are now on a five-game loss streak. That is not what they wanted to see. It's not what they wanted to play around. And this has been Axis's story for a lot of their time in the LGL. Some passable wins in the early stages of splits before kind of falling away from the pack. So... Actually, so things changed in 2020 for the they LGL. Um, so the LGL changed format. They ended up uh, effectively franchising the league where in 2020, where the teams which were involved would stay involved. Before that, we actually had a triple round robin. We had a, a double round robin for a little while after that for the next two years. But during the triple round robin era of uh, before 2020, Axis always went three and no, uh, three 18, and 18. 18 three and yeah. 18. That was, I was trying to remember what 21 with minus three is. It looked... I've talked it's about circle. circles. It's not a, yeah. It's, it's, you see, three is like triangle yeah. numbers. That's that's wrong. <laughs> three points. I can't accept it. <laughs> yeah, unless it's pi. And that's a three point one four. Three point one four one five nine something else. Uh, that's um, pretty good. Is it yeah. an apple or a blackberry version? Uh, I, I, I I like both versions. Of, uh, it's, Ooh, chicken. Mega Man. Great take him. Pretty low. <laughs> but, um, the chicken run reference was not expected, but appreciated. Yeah, but. 
We have once again bot lane being the angle of attack. Here. But there's Going a cannon guys, and they're going to try and turn this one. But that steadfast presence is so brutal, and it'll be another pair of kills. Oscar burns out, and they'll be able to get that one as well. As Swamp does get away to safety, but everything else falls away. Oh, chickens come in, kills come out. Hawks get two kills in the TV2. Magnificent. Uh, Poppy W to deny the dash thing. Actually, it might have even been three dashes all in mm -hmm. all. I can't remember if whether uh, Volleyball has Q actually at the very end of it counts as a mini dash, but I saw a lot of bumps against that uh, golden Aegis um, steadfast presence from Blank and the Hawks. They keep going bot and they keep getting away with it. Axes, they see the play coming and you can... I, I feel really bad for Axis yeah. because I can see them planning about this. They have Volleyball here. Again, that Volleyball is a wonderful early game champion to play around but they just don't quite have the timing. They don't consider oh. all the factors, and that is one dash stop. Two, that's a, the double knockup from the ultimate, which was hit by blank. Levels up in the middle of that fight, and Hawks have just been better around bot lane. They have outplayed, doesn't matter. I mean, Axes, they're taking calculated risks. They're calculating the, the plays. They're just bad at maths. Unfortunately so, and you can see that the thundering smash will stop the Callista. It doesn't really get to hop very easily in Poppy W either. It's brutal. Just stands there and goes, well, this is a bit disgusting. And now being chased down, there's an attract repel on as well to make sure Sanctuary's having a difficult time. Knocked up by the Keeper's verdict, trying to get towards his blast code so desperately. Oh! Flash forwards away from that Banshee. But now Blank is actually in a difficult position. Couldn't secure the kill with Bert the Flash. He's got backup. This time he actually has backup. It's still going to be Sanctuary forced out of lane. And this allows you now to get Bomb onto tower as Tristana. This is the one time of Volleyball wasn't bot side because they were taking Herald. Marble has the explosive charge. Can, I think he's actually waiting for the wave to get under tower, so we can actually wave clear both the tower and kill the wave with the explosion at the end of it. Maximizing that value, multiple plates, Axe is losing out on the play yet again. The play on towards this top is Kanata being chunked out, but I don't necessarily think he's in threat of kill quite yet. Ow. Chunk though, and actually maybe I'll take that one back, take him pretty low. Yellow Yoshi away from the Mega though, so I think that'll be it. Just a healthy trade in favor of the Nar with the Mega Bar running up. out. I do, however, want to point out Swamp did get the Rift Herald while some of these plays were happening. On the other side, I'd like to talk about Marble. Yes, we can do that. Because um, Marble was a player, Lexi and a lot of us were quite excited to see come up into the LJL proper. He was a superstar in Academy with that very lauded V3 Academy roster from the end of last year. And had a quiet entry to the league. A lot to learn was often not the best when things went a little bit away from them, as is often the case. In, in the way we'd seen from a lot of Academy yeah. carries, I think of, uh, of course, Milan coming mm -hmm. into CGA, but we expected more from Marble, and yeah, I think he, he did have that quite entry. That said, we have seen improvement, and we are starting to see it in this game as well, where he's being played around, and thus far, yes, with the uh, assistance of Reiner and Blank, is thus far delivering. He's now 2-0, 100% kill participation, a lot of gold to his name, and a position to carry if Swamp doesn't find a way to potentially punish them for overshoving Danny. So there was a ward behind uh, that wall which spotted out Oscar waiting with a flash, waiting with a uh, fate call from Callista. And uh, right out with the sweep, of course, spots that Swamp through in that try brush too. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> yeah, want to see me kill bot lane? Want to see me do it again? They're trying to again. Head towards this bot side. Top lane is well and truly an island, but one of these is a gangplank and can influence bot lane. The other one is sadly a Nar. Can only teleport to the friend. He's already got that one on mm. cooldown. For the first time this game, you even have a brief look in towards mid lane. It has really been about that 2v2. Megaman now, of course, on the um, Seraphine building up towards a Leandries will be relevant in those team fights at some point. But I'm wondering now with that Tristana uh, being able to kill the first target into the fight so, so effectively, whether that Seraphine is even going to be uh, of much value. We know that Megaman played a lot of it last year. I'm just wondering if this is going to be a difficult game for him now. Call it out as well. This time, Swamp, Sangchu, and Oscar all have ultimates. They didn't the last time we saw the fights. That means there is more tools to kind of play around the poppy. More tools to get in and no cause top danger. In this fight no top lane. Flash Oscar misses the bandage toss. Gets the dragon. Though he's like booted out. Blank taken very low. But what about the turnaround? The fate calls coming through. The cannon barrage is down. But Axis will take the dragon and get out with the herald down towards the bot lane to get more plays. And, and that is a huge win from that situation for Axis. Now Kanatsu doesn't have an ult oh, towards the top side. Okay. That's just the end of a, that's the end of a trade. It's a little bit of an oopsie, but whatever. Hawks go onto the dragon, try and disengage. They don't manage to do that. They don't use uh, they, they don't use the bust shot either to disengage. And Swamp gets to the steal. Everyone gets out alive. Axes. That is a heist they get away with. 
We really, really do. And it got a little bit close. I thought we were going to get a few more fireworks, but Swamp gets in and gets a steal just before the Keeper's Verdict comes out. And actually, it's the... Uh, I'm not quite sure. Who's Seraphine the gets uh, yeah, punted Seraphine out. Everyone else uh, gets to stay around. I mean, of course, Ozuka coming in this split as a rookie also had a difficult entry. Mm. A lot of our rookies from um, at least the Challenger Series... Um, have had difficult entries to the L gel. It takes them a little while to, to get themselves tempered, get themselves sleek. Hegemon just oh, about stunned so out. Low needs to be afraid. Jets out alive just about my days. That was inches away. A single auto attack from death double left somewhere out there having sweats. <laughs> so Axes going to still at this point be fairly far behind in gold. That bot lane being the big pain point for them. But... They managed to get away. Two dragons. It mm -hmm. is and um, what rift is it? It is a rift of ocean rift. Ocean rift. Yeah. There's flowers I was like, everywhere. I was looking at the walls and I'm like, this isn't a Manta and Fertile. Those are the two which I know. And then of course there are hex gates, and I was doing it by process elimination. Uh, ocean some cloud look clearly. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> It's not, by the way, it really is an ocean rift. Don't no, listen to me, I mean, I'm lying. Cloud, cloud rift implies the existence of a Sephiroth rift. And that's what ah, I'm really scared of. Do we get um, a Tifa rift somewhere? Like, does that be like, <laughs> just hits the gym all the time? <laughs> So, uh, everyone, they used to have a Zach Rift, but they removed it. Every, every, everyone's an Italian politician. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Okay. That was close to the wire, sir. Um, so, yeah, I, no one, no one, no one, no, 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 and a potential here with some of the tools in play for Axis to start making some of those big, big game plays. But I do need to start to see them doing it within the next few minutes. Or so I think they're going to start hitting that point where damage gets a little bit scary, especially if this Tristan and Victor continue to kind of get free gold into their pockets. So this is um, now the point where we start seeing, again, another test of fundamentals. And this is where typically your V3 and your Axis, your bottom teams of the LGL currently have started to fall apart. They had the tools to force play somewhere on the map, but you also have to split it at the same time. You are currently losing side lanes. Victor is going to be pushing in an either matchup. Gangplank will be fine farming up and clearing waves in his own way. It feels like really Dasher is the champion which can get pressure across the map, and that has led to Hawks getting themselves uh, lead on that bot lane. Even if Axes get this uh, Herald and they get away with it, they have lost something across the map for the attempts. How Hawks don't have that angle on the Herald. Looks like it's going down. Maybe they're looking just punish mm. re-entry towards this mid lane, which they do have gravity field. They do have the uh, poppies. Oh, look at this. They can choose whatever they want. They have complete control over this mid lane. Three man knock away. And that means that mid lane tower just disappears. What an ult by Blank there. Very well played from the Hawks and using those zoning tools. Yeah, and you can tell that Hawks, um, they, are, they understand what they can do with this. And again, we said this was a test of fundamentals uh, for Axis and of course for Hawks as well. What do you get? Now you move into a different phase where you have this side lane. You have your lane allocation and the way that you move across the map tested. Hawks push in that bot side. They get a wave pushing back towards them. They find themselves a way to get extra waves in their favor. They take mid lane turret. They take top lane turret. And while they lose that Herald, they get more in the trade. Hawks on this test come out ahead. Indeed it is. And... That's now all three out of turrets. That is now a vast, vast gold lead at this 16 minute mark. 5,000 gold over that, nearly towards 6,000 gold mark, all things said and done. It's a mighty lead, and it's onto champions, as we said, that do scale particularly well. Of course, Axis, they're not out of it yet. They've all got some of those mythics coming through, but I kind of feel like they need to play for this Ocean Soul point here before the second items are completed, or those item discrepancies are going to become very difficult to overcome. You can even see Marble early spike in going towards that collector second they're really wanting to accelerate this game no it's not going to be that lord dongs which is more efficient uh, once you complete the item the build path for collector is actually very very strong however this means that the next fight the hawks have just before those two items hit hawks have slightly bigger bump in power but Last time you chatted about these two teams at the Dragon, you were mentioning that there were oh, ultimates available. That's the plan to the Curse of Sound Into the Encore as well! It's beautiful, but he's not quite had the damage to finish. He hasn't quite now. It's a two for one as it stands. Seraphine picks up the Gangplank at the end of it, but the health bars are very low. Yellow Yoshi with Mega and a Mega Nar available. Gonna try and get it to the wall! Pulls him back and that means some more damage as the high notes start flying. Bandage are flashed away from Blank into the wall with a heroic charge. Gonna get the kill. We'll get the kill with the Buster shot. Now down to half HP and it's a 3v3. No smite for Axe. 
Axis, though, means it should be a straight pickup for Blank, who knocks two away, secures it, and it leaves the Callista out to dry. It's slowed down to the flash, heroic charge, but it only knocks them straight back to the teams, and they'll get out alive. Oh, and again, Axes find themselves the first part of their combo. It looks like it's going well for them. Hawks not really in a position to turn and fight. There was a big oopsie at the back end of that fight because I'm going to talk about this in the replay, but watch what happens when that Steadfast Presence is available from blank and Nas still gets into the back line. Oscar, we've had a, a lot of awkward moments from this player so far, but he does find the initial pick. Of course, you can cleanse off a lot from that Gangplank, but you don't get rid of that Magic Resist Shred and, of course, turning so much of that into true damage from the Amumu passive when you hit ultimate onto these various targets. I want you to watch what happens right now, though, because Blank doesn't actually end up pressing that W. I wonder if it was on cooldown. Yellow Yoshi just ends up timing out. I was wondering if it was an oopsie. It actually looks like it was just good timing from Yellow Yoshi, but maybe gets baited by that timing because there is no follow-up. Ends up dying for the attempt, and Blank does get that disengage for ultimate finally after this point. It's not soul point for Axes, but the Hawks are not being clean. They're ahead in gold, but even then, these fights, you f I, I feel like these fights should be cleaner. Ah. And uh, taking our time to clean up in aisle five or wherever else as we get ourselves into a pause and we'll see what ends up happening uh, in this one. We don't know whether we, I have no idea what's happening with this one. So we'll, no? we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll find out. Of course, keep an eye on Discord. We do have our lovely translators in the back room here in particular. Phenomenal for keeping. I'm sure they'll be in Twitch chat as well. Now, I don't I'm have sure. any of these things open no? right now. So I'm going to have to rely on someone to talk. Chris to out there will tell us or perhaps Lara from across the way. She's right over there, by the way. Just hi, saying, how's it going? Waving, I don't know. Yeah, no, we don't need you right now. We just, just, just waving hi. at you. Just yeah. thought we'd say hello. Just wanted to let you know that we appreciate you. Exactly. And uh, appreciate everyone else in chat as well. Um, Only um, most of you. Like, There's one or two of you. <laughs> I'm not going to name names. <laughs> yet. Maybe, maybe not sure about. <laughs> we, you know, we have like game one, super serious, Sangok, Rascal, Jester, this time-honored matchup now, which is built up over time in the LGL, particularly this year. We come into this match, pauses, circles, geometry, uh, other things, which take our fancy away yeah. from the game, and we have ourselves a lot of time to go podcast mode. <laughs> I want to take this moment, actually, while we've got the time, to shout out Megaman in that last fight, actually, mm. because that was a monstrous encore. It stretched practically from the, the mid lane river bush all the way past the dragon pit, because it hit so many people. And honestly, when that encore landed, I thought, that should be it. But they just couldn't quite lock down well, enough people and then when your volley bear dies you don't have the smite it gets very difficult to contest to contest yes but they actually get away with kills they are extra gold in pocket when sure. you're trading slightly up like that when you're behind that means an awful lot to you and yes you would have very much liked to get that dragon get yourself onto that soul point would have very much helped when you have a more long-lasting team fight comp when you're playing around Callista, uh getting consistent dps rather than huge burst you've got the seraphine keeping you in the, the conversation too um that ocean soul <clears throat> Sorry, that Ocean Soul ends up, uh, I'm, I'm choking, just like uh, the Hawks in that last fight. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, when you have this these longer fight comps, that Ocean Soul obviously becomes a very big factor to fight over. So mm -hmm. the Hawks denying that Soul point obviously very much helps them. But this should be a game which Hawks are starting to close out at this point. When you have this early game lead, you expect them to be more clean about it. And this is one of the worries which I have about this team. They are currently... You know, in our third place position, a win here gets them a solid buffer between them and the rest of the pack at this point. They would be end up uh, at least keeping themselves a game, at, a game ahead of any of the teams which end up winning from that second pack at the end of this. But it's not clean and they're not playing around that mid jungle, which is what I was worried about. While they are playing around a different area of the map, it does feel like it's not as clean as when they play through Dasher and Blank. Yeah, I think I'll give credit where it's due, though. The macro itself has been pretty good to get a hold of those towers early to get that gold. It's just been some of these fights around the dragons that have been a little bit risky, I guess, mm. is the way to phrase it. And while we've seen some good disengages with that Keeper's Verdict, you know, shout out to Blank for that. And Marble has got four of those five kills, got the assist on the other. Like, that's good signs, but you're right. Like, some of the additional bits on top of that, some of the, the caveats, the additional notes haven't been what they were looking for. And yeah, partly that is the comp they're against. You know, like there's yeah. some big wombo combo which is making it difficult to play. And, you know, Mer Mer Mega Man back on the Seraphine, sure, you already exactly. shouted them out. We'll return back to that. Actually, you know, he's done a lot of learning as a player, returning back to this champion. He didn't find much success on in his first split, actually being a, yeah. an impact in this game. I, I think there's a there's a world, right, where you're right. Someone like a Sengok or a DFM from this position with this comp might be playing this cleaner. And especially when we're saying, look, Hawks, we can see the upward trajectory. We've still got some things we need to see improved here. I mean, well, I mean, particularly comparing to those tier teams, it's like, what, what why isn't the Hawks at that level sure. of a DFM or a Sangok? Well, the players, DFM right? are probably the best team at closing out leads in the entire team, entire region still. Now, whilst they did lose to Sangoku, 
they are still incredibly lethal when they're ahead. Sengoku, we've seen just how well they can pick apart an enemy team composition and say, you need to do this to win, we're not going to let you have that. That's actually probably one of their strengths, actually. The Hawks, it feels like they're a lot more constrained in uh, how they are winning games. Again, they are in the lead right now, but they're in a lead versus one of our bottom teams. We expect them to be performing in this game, and currently, even though there are some slight worries, those worries mean more when we're holding them to a high standard now. We want them to be showing as a high level of skill set, which they are currently struggling a little bit. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, the collector's completed. They've got this Tristana marble, this superstar rookie AD character spell that was coming in and having a good game, right? Like, this is a game where you go, right, guy's got the lead playing the Tristana, got lots of towers down, has played the, the role of this champion very well thus far. He's got a zeal item on the way for third as well to continue snowboarding that lead. Like, maybe something like a rapid fire cannon, maybe to... That would be totally Zype, man. You know, I, I, I've never, I, yeah, you know, there's so many items you can build, but that one would be particularly exciting to see. Um, I only learned what that that word means today. What, what? I forgot it again. I, I mean, think I know I'm... Zeitgeist is in spirit of the times, but no, that's no, no, that, that's that's just that's just not the right. I didn't know do. this one, so clearly I am become I am become boomer. That, that's that's really, of yeah, words. That, that's not really Zeit. Um, oh, Zeit, Zeit. Yeah, I, I had I had Zeit. Nah. No. Okay. Well, anyway, that's uh, my neologism for the day. We're going back to a more eloquent. Form of that's talking. great. Um, and if you've never heard that word, you've not heard this cast before. No, that makes up new words all the time. What it means is to make new words, and I'm not clever enough to know the actual. Oh my God. I've got one for you. I've got a Quiggle. That's me. Oh, we have another. Oh, uh, so our producer as uh, uh, because yes. you know, Drew, well, actually, we discovered the reason for the pause now for the break. Ah. Um, we we had to go on a bit of a quest to find ourselves another circle, yeah. and uh, we found instead um, the legendary sphere, which is ah, yes. infinite multiple circles. circles infinite. Yes. Well, actually, one of the ways you can find out. The integral of a sphere is actually putting multiple like circular cylinders on top of each other uh, to find, oh. out, uh, find out a... Uh, it's actually how you end up rendering a lot of objects in, in, huh. in 3D graphics. You end up putting, putting multiple cylinders on top of each other. It's one way to build them. It's not always the best. But, but it's, it's a way. way. It is okay. a way to do it. Yep. That's, that, that's good to know. I don't know whether I actually got any of how that works, but I understand well, that that's a way of doing it. So the thing it. is though, computer programs don't actually... So ironically... They actually don't deal well with circles. They only do multiple lines stitched together. Which is why the, initial, the, the eventual war between machine, man and machine will happen. Um, it's a battle between... Um, who has circles and, and who doesn't. Yeah, exactly. So actually what you end up doing is just put low, you just put more and more lines into it. and more. That's what more polygons are, mm. right? So to make yourself a more realistic circle. Ah, yes. So um, you end up stacking a lot of them together. So you have a game like Final Fantasy XIV, which had a, var, uh, had a had like a vase, like a vase, like a flower yes. vase, which had too many polygons in it because they wanted to make it too smooth. Both, and yeah, it broke the game. It yeah. It's just a vase, a background yeah, object. Exactly, and then like they just didn't do it for characters. It's like characters had less polygons in the vase. It was ridiculous. I mean, it was a nice vase. <laughs> it was a nice vase, but they remade that game for a reason. Um, <sighs> took it off the market, relaunched it, did quite well, well for itself. But uh, League of Legends has a few polygons. It has it some of them. Well, um, that's a polygon. What about a Baron Gon? That's yeah, certainly that's a Texas are looking for. They're stacking up. Um, yeah. And actually, you know, I look oh, at gosh. this, you need go. a good Poppy ult. Where is Poppy? They're not here. And those Ren stacks are starting to go up. Oh, oh, that's good flash from Dasha. Keeps himself alive. And now we got ourselves a fight enough about the random What's extra noises. Do? Second Ooh, Oscar Misawa, that's a massive barrel. Huge the ultimate though. We'll get them out of range, but it's going to be Osaka trying to stay alive as he falls in step. And the turnaround is just huge. They just can't stop that Tristana who is deleting them all. Demolition indeed swamp. Going to get charged on into a chilling smite, claims the bear's life. And a decent attempt at the turnaround is quickly snuffed out oh. by the Hawks. Pentagon, oh, it's not Pentagon. done. Axe is gone. Going to be a clean ace for the Hawks, taking no prisoners. and Not even a kill. This was so close to being a big, huge team fight for Axis. They had their ultimates. They had their summon. Sanctu dies with ult, flash, heal available. Megaman, of course, at the back end of that was uh, not really in a position to fight back anyway. But the big moment was you see Yellow Yoshi finding the engage. And actually, Yellow Yoshi has been finding angles. But the combo didn't quite land with the Encore. You can see what happens right after this. He's looking for it. But already, the barrels are starting to land. Look at this. And suddenly, it's going to be a jump out. It's a heroic charge onto the friendly neighborhood scuttle crab uh, for the Hawks and... With great power comes great dashing potential um, as you don't get that Encore come through. The CC doesn't land. And when you have that Tristana being able to free fire back at you, you can't actually stand and fight. That early spike from um, the Hawks and that lead, which they've managed to guard up, working out for them in this fight. Finally, 
Takes a bit of a throw to them from Axis, but Hawk's finally in much more solid control of this game. Very much so. And of course, that Phantom Nazi not rapid fire can, of course, completed for the Tristan because that was a bit silly. They've got a Void Staff in for Dash. The three items are there. They're going to keep chasing on Swamp. Just disappears. There's nothing left. They're going to charge in for even more. They'll get a Fate's Call to keep the Amumu alive, but that is about it. The Curse of the Sad Mummy appears to be watching the Empire fall one more time. Just nothing left in the tank for Axis, it seems. I think at that point, it's more like a curses of the sad mummy as he yes. swears violently as he has to get pulled out of the fray from a very dangerous situation again. And while sang has so often been the carrying factor for Axis, after that early lane of the bot side, dominance was established by the Hawks. It felt so difficult for this lane to really play around some stuff. And you know, credit to Axis for making things a little difficult for the Hawks, even though they didn't make their lives easier in their own way. We're getting back to this point now where actually Hawks can go back to one of their strong points, which is shown during this game, being able to flow around the map, allocate their lanes correctly, take down towers, and suddenly 3,000 gold to the positive after that Baron went down. And of course, they had the fight before that Baron went down. So actually, overall, probably more like 4.5 mm. to 5,000 gold off of the last series of plays. And you can see how much that has led to the huge gains that they have. Looking to reset, get those items, and then find one more fight probably end up winning the game for the Hawks and solidifying themselves in third place. It just feels that Axis have yet to really find a true combo with all of them hitting their ultimates at once, which is what they were kind of drafting for. It's just not really worked out. And at this point, it feels too little. It feels too late. That is an eye-watering gold lead. I mean, just the item discrepancy, the scaling discrepancy, everything at the minute has gone well and truly against Axis. And it feels as a really what we're looking at is a slow, drawn-out death than any real true contest at this point of the game. An extra turret falls. All of the turrets outside of the base now for Axes left in rubble. Um, Hawks going to be looking to, once again, probably reset after this point. They've cleared through the enemy jungle. At least Axes have managed to keep some vision alive and available. Not all teams managed to do that on the retreat. Uh, of course, Sweep is not quite there for the Hawks at this point. Next time they come up, though, we've got to imagine that Axes, even with that, will be struggling to find their own engages. And that is really the only way I can kind of see them getting back into this. I think when you go into those even 5v5s now, I just can't see you coming up with enough damage. You need to... The, the way that without a team like RNG, very, very good at this. Sure. Um, Rogue, the see, showed Fair some of this shot. too, actually. You know, I was watching this the other day. They pulled it off versus XL. Sadly, ended up uh, losing the game, which they showed this off in. They're very good at guessing where you're going to go put your next ward, meeting you there and catching you out when you go to put it down. Mm. So playing these little traps, trying to mind game and try and play around that vision. You can see though, Hawks, they're using a buddy system. Blank is there, Reiner is there. Blank is so damn tanky at this point. Level 14, multiple tank items engaged at this point. Of course, has the ultimate to disengage should things come to a very dangerous situation. They've claimed territory. They're not going to be able to keep Axis out of the river, but they are going to be able to contest vision and stop Axis from going. Yes, in. again, Osaka just can't make yes. it happen. There's still a fade call, but I just don't think it's going to matter. Swamp goes golden. It's a decent curse. That's happening. Just not to follow up the encore, is in. But right there's up. just no damage in the turnaround. Damage is absolutely insane. Kinatsu is level 16, and those barrels are warheads indeed. The Killerton blast delete the rest of the team. They'll hop while Dasher gets the triple. And there's nothing left to say, Swamp, the one remaining member. And you can say, get out of my Swamp all you want. There is nothing to stop the oncoming onslaught of Farquaad and the minions. Nah, it's all over now. Hawk's going to move to five and three. Keep themselves in that third place. And Axes staring up once again, as they so often have at the rest of the LGL table. The trajectory is still on an upward trend. They're not quite in the rarefied heights of Sengoku and DFM yet but they're certainly continuing to climb the mountain. It will be a decisive victory from them in under 30 minutes as they just play around with their food for a few moments more. Gonna finally hit that Nexus, shattering the Nexus crystal. That'll be the game done, game two of the day. Done and dusted, Axes, you know, when it came out of draft, we saw some comfort for them. We saw maybe some angles to play around bot side and you know, credit to them. You can tell that this team is struggling and that they haven't quite got that higher level of understanding of how to execute on their ideas yet. But I feel like their idea of actually piling on bot lane, that felt like the right idea. It just felt like Hawks beat them to that punch. Mm. They had a better sense of timing and a much better sense of execution. Just there 10 seconds before, just there on a better wave position. And, you know, even like sensible things like not leveling the the explosive charge first to try and make that. Now, that didn't work out, but it's a good, good idea. idea to get the hex flash player. Like there's some like, Serious thought that Axis just weren't quite on the same level of this game, and it did lead to them kind of getting run over as the game went on.
But that will be it from me. And I believe Nymera as well that we're going to take to a quick post game. I'll and be back there, for one more desk. One more desk. But I'm done for the day. Nymera is nearly done for the day. And we'll cut to a break before we come back. Yeah, this is great. What happens, what happens if this, this is removed? removed? What can you do if you don't, you don't have the same, same level of agency? This feels like it is still agency on blank. It is much less on Dasher. And it was interesting for me to see them go towards this, maybe just try it out against a team that wouldn't punish them so hard. And it was very much a more bot side focused draft. Yeah, and then I think on the other side for Axis, I think it's a it's a similar sort of situation, um, if a bit more obvious in the way that they want to play. I think the Seraphine uh, and the Nar both incredibly safe uh, as solo laners go and well you said yourself on the cast uh, Alex the, the amount of pressure that a Callista and a Mumu can put out in the early stages especially level one is got... disgusting actually yeah it is, especially when you've got a volleyball that can turn up as well this is a, a a bot lane 3v3 that should be winning against pretty much anything but I think that Hawks were really intelligent in the way that they actually countered what Axis wanted to do in that bot side and, and when Sanctu wasn't able to get ahead, Axis found themselves with not really much else that they could play for around the map. How do you 
you guys think that maybe maybe Axis could have turned things around? Because to me, it felt like they were able to engage fairly well and and begin the fights with some confidence, but then they just started to fall apart more and more. Yeah. So I think uh, I'm going to tag on to what Middle Cop is saying. Actually, it's that way. That, that's the way. Uh, okay. Cameras are difficult. You know. But um, <laughs> I, I think I'm going to tag on to what Middle Cop said in terms of it felt like they had a clear idea of what they wanted to do. Blister and Mimi, you know what it's going to do. The Evolibro is going to turn up down there to help them. And they did start doing that. And they had the right ideas. Execution was just five seconds off, 10 seconds off. Not there with the right skill shots. Not there with the right ability to kite out. It felt like it was good ideas, poor execution from Axes, which is, in my eyes, better than poor ideas, good execution in some ways, because I, I can see that cerebral thinking. It's just like, Tightening up just on terms of some of those timings, that was the difficult part. In terms of how do you get this team from going to be like from the level they're at now to the upper level, it is mainly on that sense of timing. On a wider sense, outside of the, the big plays that they're setting up for as well, they kind of lost the bigger picture across the map. They were, when they went towards Herald, they lost three, four plays bot side. When they went towards the second Herald, they lost top lane and mid lane because they managed to get zoned off of that because actually what Hawks comp does is hold its ground incredibly well. And... It feels like they zero in on the one play, not quite executing on that. And if they don't win that play, the rest of the map falls apart with it. So there's a lot of extra things to just tighten up and just view things in a bigger picture. Well, well Nymera, can I present to you good ideas and good execution? Because I think that's what we saw a, a, a lot from the Hawks game. Whilst they were able to secure some early advantages onto Marble, uh, for sort of 10 minutes after uh, a lot of that early action uh, went down, we actually didn't see too much fighting from the Hawks. It was more them moving around the map, using the pressure that they had, using the lead that they already had to secure further advantages, which is something that I didn't expect to see from this team today. And obviously you have to caveat with that they are playing against Axis, who haven't quite been able to execute in the way that they would have liked to. But I think it would be, um, it would be remiss of us to ignore the fact that whilst Hawks that their hands looked pretty good this game. Their brains were definitely switched on as well, and they were making yeah. some good moves around the map. Now, and actually, I, I look at other teams which do very well at just like moving around the map and destroying towers. Actually, when 100 Thieves were actually very strong uh, when they were on their title run, one of the things that they would do very well is like stable early game and then suddenly tower, 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 and then they get through to a very large gold lead, which they would play very effectively through. Is it a complete analogy? No, but I look at other teams which have done this very well, and we have seen success with it even in major regions too, so that is an important skill set to show, and it's important to show that as a top team, it, well, a Hawks looking to be a top team, they haven't solidified that yet, but they're on that trajectory, that they can show those uh, bright signs of life. And looking at this, this Hawks right now, and... The top teams, DFM, uh, you well, especially DFM. I'm wondering. They're sure they are, they have a leg up. They are a little bit ahead. They they are, I, I believe, now a match ahead. So if they drop today, then the race becomes a little bit closer. But how do you think that they compare against these two top teams? But more specifically, DFM. Uh, and we can we can begin with a uh, middle card if that's okay. Yeah, I I, I think that the. Big difference between Hawks and DFM is that DFM are better at everything, and, and that's not to sort of um to to flame like the those. Hawks, but it it it, it just sort of <laughs> hold on. No, DFM I get what you are, DFM are a team that are generally strong. It's not specific parts of the map that you need to be keeping an eye on at all times. Ebi, Utapon, Yahoo, like all all of their players are are exceptional. Um. And their macro game is is very, very clean. The way that they play early games is very, very clean. The way that they play team fights is very, very clean. So whenever you compare a team to DFM, unless it's the, the likes of Sengoku, you're always going to be saying you just need to get generally better. Um, yeah. And, and there's a lot of potential uh, on this Hawks roster for them to eventually get to that. And, and I would really like to echo some of those points, because actually the more I think about it, the more I think actually a lot of what Blank does for the team, Steel does for DFM better. Yeah. A lot of what happens in the early game, DFM do better. And then when on top of that, when you get these leads, it does feel like you can play through any lane. The Hawks haven't reached that point yet. They showed a little bit around bot side. They've typically played through mid. They don't quite have that versatility yet. Although again, they're starting to build this library of skill sets they can use to potentially compete. Are they there yet? No, I think they're a distant third right now, but we'll see what happens when you get another two round robins in, you get to play these teams again. 
right? Only time will tell. And before we move on to our break before Burning Core and V3, I have one little Laura question. Uh, yellow Yoshi is a tank maid, right? Yes, yes. Do you, do you know what a Yellow Yoshi does in Mario? I actually... He's the tanky Yoshi. I... Wait. I, I just came to and that reality. <laughs> I was just watching this game and I was like, yellow Yoshi, but, but wait, what does the yellow Yoshi do? Like he eats something and then he just, you know, he stomps around. <laughs> Sorry, this is completely right. unrelated to me. No, this no, is the no, most no, important no. thing I've learned about the algebra today. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely 100%. Great lore piece. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. And then I think it's appropriate for us to move into On that bombshell. Yes, exactly. And uh, we'll move on with Burning Core versus V3 next.